I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Old School Bodybuilding Clothing Company. If it's been three and a half hours since you last ate protein, and now you're starting to freak out, you are old school. If watching someone sit on a hammer machine for five minutes between sets playing with their phone pisses you off, you are definitely old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. <laughs> Welcome back to Guru Talk. I'm Dave Palumbo and I'm joined today by my good friend Leo Rex from Leo and Longevity. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Dave. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah, I keep promising Leo that I'm going to go on his show and, I, and I'm, I'm a terrible promiser because I just have no time. Now, you know what I use, Leo, now I use my, my cancer as a, an excuse for everything now. I'm like, I, I, I got thyroid cancer. I can't, you know, I'm so busy. <laughs> well, now I can't pressure you at all. That's right. You're not allowed to. When you have the C word, you're immune from every, all criticism from people. <laughs> well, particularly because I'm so worried about your sleep. Because yeah. I, the only thing I could figure that would, would have been wrong with your program was you yeah. were sleeping so little. Yeah. That's the only thing. I think it's hurting my immune system, to be honest with you, that I'm not sleeping enough. I'm terrified right now because my wife is uh, halfway into her pregnancy right. and I'm so concerned about the loss of sleep in the upcoming years, yeah. which ages people tremendously when they first have children. You can see them visibly age. Absolutely. My wife and I have aged 20 years. Because uh, I was a guy who always slept like eight, nine hours a night and I always needed a lot of sleep. And as a matter of fact, when I was in medical school, one of the reasons, not, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why I left was because I felt, and I've said this on another show, that I felt I was going to die young by getting cancer because I wasn't getting enough sleep and I, and I, and I was changing my mood and, and I just didn't feel good. I was getting sick all the time. And so I, I, I just, la I said, that's, I'm not, there's no way that I'm going to just fall into that as big Lenny would say, cookie cutter, you know, lifestyle, you know, go to college, med school, be a doctor because everyone else thinks that's what I should do because I'm smart. I said, I, I got to break out of that mold and I'm going to do something different because I just don't feel like it's, it's healthy. But you know, when you have kids, it's not about you anymore. There's no more selfishness. You, you got to do for the kids. So um, I don't know if it has anything to do with what I got, but it's, it's, you know, it is a concern for me. Someone's got to create like a, like a pill where you can actually like take four hours of sleep and have it like count as eight hours of sleep in terms of neuro regenerative effects, you know, and immune system regeneration. They are working on things to improve REM sleep. There are mm -hmm. some promising compounds, but most of the things just uh, deepen non-REM sleep. And usually it's very interesting, by the way, Dave, when, when you improve non-REM sleep, your REM sleep worsens. Right. And when you improve REM sleep, your non-REM sleep worsens. And this isn't from research. It's from my personal experience. Right. It so makes for sense. For example, if you take like a lot of melatonin, you'll yeah. notice your dreams, you dream more, yes. but you might sleep lighter. If you take a lot of cholinergic things like acetylcholesterase inhibitors mm. before bed, you'll also find lucid dreams, mm. but less deep sleep. Right. But then if you take like a tranquilizer, you won't dream. Right. And I don't know if it, I don't think tranquilizers actually give you a good night's sleep, though. What I find is that it's a combination. You need both, really, is exactly. what is it, what it amounts to. And so, you know, when I'm get like so crazy tired. You know, I'll I'll just like literally fall asleep, and it's, it, I'm in the deepest of deep sleeps. Like I don't even know where. Like it's like I'm. It's like I lost those two hours. I don't remember anything, and I think because I think we need a good four hours of solid deep sleep. But I find that because I, I usually get about four hours. You know, that that's that's good, and and I feel rested. But I feel like my brain didn't get a chance to kind of. I don't know. What's the best word? I think you need dreaming almost. It's almost like a meditation for your brain. Like it kind of relaxes your brain and takes away that anxiety aspect. The four hours, the first four hours, I believe, are for regenerative effects of your body, you know, physically. I think the brain, though, likes to dream. And I don't know what it does for the brain, and that's, you know, but I, it, it seems like you wake up calmer and, 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 and more focused when you have those extra three hours after this, the four hours initially of deep sleep. Sure. Let's discuss this, actually, because I've studied this topic at, at great length. So yeah. number one, 
the sleep goes through cycles. So we go through, a, I know you know this, but just yeah. for the audience, yeah, non-REM sure. and REM sleep cycles throughout the night. Usually you get four of them or so. And what happens is that as you go on through the night, the cycles of REM sleep gets shorter. Hmm. The problem is there's a lot of studies showing that even just reducing sleeping time from seven hours to six dramatically worsens metabolic yeah. function the next day, hypertension, and the immune system, of course, which is the major issue we're seeing, because for the audience that's not un un totally aware of what we're talking about, the immune system is what is vigilant, targeting your cancers. Absolutely. You have cells like tumor necrosis factor alpha. That's tumor necrosis factor alpha. If that's not working, like you take a TNF alpha blocker, like for me, I have Crohn's disease. So the doctors wanted to give me a TNF alpha blocker. Right. That increases, increases the rates of cancer. You could do the same thing by sleeping four hours a night. Right, right. Well, that's the, I'm, I'm so afraid of it, but you know, the, the thing is when you're coaching, your job never really ends. So, so it's like you're always, and then you have kids, you have 300 snakes. I don't, I don't know what I mean, yeah, your life yeah, no, is. So you're pretty funny. accurate. Yeah, that's a pretty accurate assessment. <laughs> My life is nothing compared to nah. yours. I, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't slept last night because nah. I had to work so much. Oh, so really? I don't even know how you're doing it. Well, you know, I, I used to, when I would, uh, before I had kids, I would stay up pretty late doing like my internet work and, and, you know, researching and stuff like that till four in the morning. But then I, but I was able to sleep till noon if I wanted to the next day because I didn't have any, anyone depending on me, you know, so. I always got my sleep, no matter how late I went to bed at night, I would just sleep later the next day. You know, So now it's like, all right, if I go to bed four in the morning, which a lot of times I do, I wake up at eight or nine or you know, sometimes, my kids have been actually sleeping late, which has been pretty good. So we've been almost, sometimes I, I almost get it till 10 o'clock. So if I get six hours, I feel pretty good. Um, it's it's a rare, it's a, sometimes I'm just exhausted. I'll go to bed and I'll sleep an eight hour night just because it's never continuous because the kids come in and I wake up to go to the bathroom, but you know, if I'm in, if I'm laying down in a bed for eight hours, that that's pretty good. When I wake up, I feel really rested. I find that you know that when I wake up after four, only four hours of sleep, but the lights are going out here. I think we got some spirits in here. When I go to bed after only four hours, with with only four hours of sleep, I feel physically like my body still aches the next day. It's like like if I have an injury, it doesn't heal as well, and so. So I didn't go into some more details. So yeah. when you're in when you're in REM sleep, the, so number one, we're talking about tranquilizers. Yeah. So if you take a Z drug, the Zol Zolpidem and those uh, Ativan, Adiv right. those those are short acting GABA A receptor modulators like benzos, but they're short acting to put you to sleep. Right. Those are associated with a thirty percent increase in mortality. Really? So that's now why is that? Now, that's the question. So the sleep scientists don't actually know. They're researching why, because it cuts out REM sleep, but they're researching. They don't know why REM sleep is so important. Now, I do have some papers showing yeah. that REM sleep is important for brain function, for certain things like, for example, for you, Dave, you're very concerned about dementia. Yeah. In the brain, in the, in the nervous system, we have something called microglia, which release inflammatory cytokines and cause mm. neuroinflammation. Right. In REM sleep, you have something called the glymphatic system. They named that after the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. It cleans the glial cells. If you don't go fully into REM sleep, supposedly right. you build up neuroinflammation. Interesting. And that's the, by the way, people who have get, get Alzheimer's disease often have very poor sleep as they go along, mm. which brings us to a topic we should discuss also, which is this balancing act between cancer yeah. and heart disease and brain function on the other hand, right. because with cancer, you're trying to stop growth in your body. So I would imagine after you cut out both sides of the thyroid, which is what I think you're doing, right? Um, it, it seems like that might be the, the case. Um, they're going to go in there and decide, I guess, how close my nodule is to the, my trachea. If it's not touching the trachea, they may only take one lobe out. If it is, they'll take both out. But don't you think there could be a genetic? Do, do you think there could be a genetic polymorphism that's making your thyroid more susceptible to having cancerous to I mean, me, I would be scared that my thyroid is dysfunctional and, and maybe yeah. it'll pop up. Yeah, my thyroid. I just had my thyroid function test done, plus the. Uh, um, the anti-nuclear, like antibodies, the thyro, uh, thyro th excuse mm. me, thyroxidase uh, antibodies. I don't have anything. My thyroid is perfect. I think what's happened is that, you know, the thyroid gland is an accumulator of a lot of waste and heavy mm. metals and stuff like that. I think that that could be an issue. And I know there's a lot of people have given me, a very good friend of mine, Blake Miller, gave me some alternatives to how to like neutralize some of that, you know, using um, um, iodine, uh, potassium iodide, right directly onto the thyroid and, and you know orally and some other stuff, oxygenating the body, obviously alkalinizing the body, but ozone treatment. But I, I really feel uncomfortable depending on that to, to shrink this, this nodule. I'm getting it taken out. I, don't, I have cancer in my family that kills everyone, so I'm not taking any chances I'm, in letting this thing spread. I, it's, to me, it's too risky. 
Um, I'd rather just not have a thyroid and, and, and go on replacement. I know it sounds, if I didn't have kids, I would probably experiment a little more, but I'm not doing that. No, I, yeah. I would, uh, if I didn't have kids, I would be rushing to get both out. Right. And I would do the yeah. iodine, the radioactive iodine anyway. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's probably going to be the protocol that's yeah, going to take but, place. Yeah, but what I was saying, so, so once you remove it, then the issue becomes, your, you know, of course, the concern. Like my, my grandmother died of liver cancer, so yeah. I'm always thinking about that also. And in your case, your mother, unfortunately, yeah. passed away from a very deadly cancer that's, by the way, very affected by adrenaline. That cancer, just really? we're talking, hmm. yes, very affected by adrenaline, very associated with it, Pancreatic and that's cancer, why, yeah. that's probably why when you were young, you came up with this process of thinking mentally, I want to clear my mind, yeah, and I want to have a peaceful mind because you associated that negative energy, mm. which is true because that's the stress sensor, sensor, the HPA, and mm -hmm. the you know the adrenals and all of that yeah. stuff, but, but it particularly affects that kind of deadly cancer. But in either case, so if you have cancer in your in your family and you already had one, you would think you'd want to stop growth in your body and like take rapamycin every so often, yeah. fast, like you were doing 12 hours a day. Yeah. But then if you do that, you weaken your mind and yeah. your heart. Right. This, this so is what I, I came up with. I did an experiment. I slept a couple days in a row, and my memory and everything and my mental acuity got much better. I think my mental issue is, is not sleeping. My DNA says that I don't have any of these dementia genes. Um, I'm very good with that. Um, my only issue is DNA-wise, weakness-wise, is detoxification. You know, but the, how, do, you know, how do you know you don't have the DNA, the uh, degenerative diseases? Because none of the testing services test all of them. I'm the only one who does. Oh, none, I don't know. I, the DNA testing that I that I actually have on my website that I work with this company, DNA Power, they actually test a lot of those those genes for dementia. There's 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 over like forty or fifty of them. I'm but sure that there's more than they test for. But the ones at least that I tested for, whether you have a predisposition to Alzheimer's, it's I have no def, no genetic uh, mutations in those genes. So. It doesn't look like that's that. I don't, and I don't, you know, I don't even know if my dad, my dad didn't have Alzheimer's. He just had dementia, like old age dementia. And I don't know. Yeah, you know, he smoked for 30 years. He, he did a lot of, you know, he didn't eat right. He didn't exercise. I believe that, you know, if you take a, the right amount of essential fatty acids, which is obviously important for regenerating the myelin sheets so, so that you have the nerve connections, I think sleeping is huge. That's the only thing, like I, I said, I think sleeping is very important for not getting dementia as well. So I really want to make a concerted effort for that. You don't really consolidate your memories unless you sleep. And yeah. that's what I find. Them. I forget things when I don't get a lot of sleep at night. If I get a good night's sleep, I remember everything. That's... They say that in the non-REM sleep, your brain uh, uh, stores it in the hippocampus. And in the REM sleep, your brain basically takes, like you said, the dream, the thoughts, and, yeah. and interplays it around your mind to associate it, yep. supposedly. Yeah, I, I believe that. I believe that. I think it's like it plays a movie and it makes it into a movie, these things, and it permanent and makes it like almost like burns it into your hard drive of your brain almost, you know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I've had some I mean you should try my lucid dreaming protocol. You have a great sleep aid. I but saw I have that. A lucid dreaming. I saw and that, but I don't I don't like nicotine. Don't steal though. it. Don't, don't, don't I don't steal like it. nicotine though. I, I can't get I don't want to get addicted to nicotine, you know. <laughs> but you should try you don't need nicotine. Well, there's uh, another I'll tell you later. There's another one you could use. But do you want do you want to talk about erythropoietin or should we yes, just briefly? Yes. About? Yeah. Um, okay, so now most people know before I'm gonna let you take over, but most people know EPO erythropoietin is the drug that is released from your your um, your kidneys and stimulates your bone marrow to produce red blood cells. You have uh, the EPO in another sense that a lot of people don't even know about, and, and I didn't really know about it until you made me aware of it. I went and looked it up. So explain to people the role of EPO in the body. So erythropoietin was discovered in the early 19th century. It was the amino acid sequence, which is very long. It's 167, 165 amino acids glycoproteins. So it's a very long sequence. The interesting, so it's released by the kidneys. It increases what's called hematopoiesis, which means the creation of red blood cells. But the th that's what we mainly think of it as. But it's also a very, very, very potent growth stimulating uh, molecule. It has multiple effects. One is at the erythropoietin receptor, EPO receptor. Um, that receptor has two binding sites. One is a strong binding site, one is a light binding site. Depending on how it binds, it has different effects even at the receptor. But it also has non-receptor, non-EPO mediated effects. Some are, so I have a, for example, just a list just for the audience. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Read it. Oh, 
Should we, I don't know if we should mention details, but anyway, the point is there's a lot of, uh, uh, by the way, if anyone wants to read more about this, you can go to leolongevity.com. I have a blog post, it's five pages long, so you can read all the details. But the point is there's multiple receptors that EPO works through. Now, the research in EPO originally was to get recombinant erythropoietin for people that have issues with hematopoiesis. Recently, only in the last five to 10 years, there has been research into this concept of trying to get erythropoietin into the brain to help right. people with Alzheimer's disease and ALS and things like that. Mm -hmm. The reason why, because it's such a, gr a potent growth stimulator. The problem is the amino acid sequence is too big to get into the brain easily unless you megadose it. And if you megadose it, you get cardiac problems because of the red blood cell right. accumulation. It, hold, so, let me ask you this question. Let me stop you. Is, is EPO supposed to be in, uh, is it supposed to cross the blood brain barrier and get into your brain? Or do we yeah. actually yes. produce EPO in the brain itself? Both. Okay. Both. Both. So it's most of the EPO in the brain probably comes from the brain. Now, obviously, if your brain is not doing its job and making it, that that's the problem, right? Uh, not quite. I, I, we don't. I, I I would tell you, Dave. I bet you that they don't know the proportion of the difference between production in the body and the brain. However, the the condition here is this: in all states of. By the way, guys, we're not talking about brain diseases. We're going to talk about body builders in a second. But I just want to tell the background. Yeah. So in all brain diseases, the main, like what your father described, dementia. It, yeah. He may not have Alzheimer's disease. He doesn't have beta amyloid plaques building up in his brain right. or tau tangles. But he has a loss of neurons. That's right. the common Shrinkage. feature of all. Exactly. Of all neurodegenerative diseases is a loss of neurons because of the loss of growth. And in the adult brain, we only grow new neur neurons in two places and they decrease as we grow older. So the idea was, can we take the erythropoietin molecule and cut it up so that it's smaller and could potentially do two things? One is pass the blood-brain barrier, and that they did. And number two, could we make it non-hematopoietic? So right. it doesn't at all cause hematopoiesis. So you can use number one, a lower dose, get mm. it into the brain. Number two, no hematopoiesis, just growth. So they hematopoiesis, no ma making of red blood cells, just for people who don't understand. Yeah. So, so this is the shocking thing. The bodybuilding world and strength world do not know about these molecules' existence yet. Mm -hmm. They've only been talked about in the neurodegenerative world. Even the cognitive enhancement people and the nootropics people don't know about it. It's very in the middle of nowhere. I wrote in my blog post the most detailed literature review on the subject ever written, including academic papers. But what I found through it is that we have a few options. And what's interesting about these options is, so some of them, number one, some of them cause hematopoiesis. Some don't cause hematopoiesis, most of them. Some actually not only don't cause hematopoiesis, but one of them, which is actually specifically SIBO, C-E-B-O, does not even cause angiogenesis, which means the creation of new blood vessels. Why does that matter? For someone like you or me who doesn't want to get cancer. Angiogenesis is the most dangerous thing for cancers, of course, because cancers really thrive with oxygen-rich environment with blood vessels, specifically vasculature. And that's why we don't want to use BPC-1. You know what's in the hallway? Let me stop you. What's interesting, because you made a statement, it's a little contradictory, so people might not you know, understand. Yeah. Cancer itself, it, it, cancer cells seem to breed in an anaerobic capacity, creating ATP, but they require a very complex blood supply to them. So there's, there's, it's like there's these two different things that kind of seem contradictory, but they're not. I think the blood supply basically keeps them alive, the, set, the, the tumors, but yet they don't use oxygen per se as their fuel source you know, to make ATP. They, they, they engage in anaerobic respiration more. That's true. They're, and also, I'm not an expert on cancer metabolism. And there's some, I think there are various kinds of metabolisms of cancers because some can exist without blood vessels around them. Like they can be, have you heard of those? Because some cancers don't have uh, angiogenesis around them and they survive. Well, I think the angiogenesis is caused by because these cancer cells need nutrients because they're dividing so quickly. I don't, I don't think it's for the oxygen. I think it's for more mm -hmm. the nutrients that they're cool. stealing from the bloodstream, don't mm -hmm. you? I have no expertise on this at all. That, that's what I mean. It just makes sense. They need Absolutely. sugar. They need fuel. Absolutely. So the fuel is provided via the bloodstream, whereas they're not really using oxygen. Matter of fact, the oxygen can be toxic to them. Um, that's it can why be we use ozone. Yeah, yeah, with the hyperbaric chambers, yeah. and there's definitely. Re but by the way, there's also research showing that it speeds up can some some cancers very rapidly. Oh, really? So it's, yeah, it depends on the cancer. But mm. but the, so anyway, the interesting thing is so angiogenesis. We know that you know we might want to be careful of. So let me list like a couple of these interesting ones. So. Of the EPO, EPOE uh, derived molecules, the naturally found ones, which means they take the erythropoietin molecule and just cut it up. There's neuro EPO, EPO and there's EPOL. Those two are just cut out of the peptide. Then you have synthetic 
uh, peptide lacking sialic acid. That's Asialo EPO. Unfortunately, mm. they patented it. But by the way, some of these are not patented. Just right. for those that are entrepreneurial. Patented but, means they got to try to make a drug therapy out of it, right? But they're not actually working on them. They're patented and just keeping them uh, on the side. I'm sure some Chinese guy would love to produce yeah, this. Yeah, I'm and, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. So uh, synthetic, they also have synthetics that are carbon, carbomylated. That's SIBO. And that one is not does not produce angiogenesis because it has such a diverse function. But there's about five receptors that may be involved, and that's why they're a bit different. And then there's what are called small mimetic peptides. And these include, there's a long list, HBP, EPOBIS, NL100. These all have slightly different functions. Now, these all have all been tested very, very, on a very little bit. How does the growth pathway work? Other than those receptors, it works primarily through the JAK-STAT pathway, the Janus kinase pathway and STAT5 specifically. Mm -hmm. The JAK-STAT pathway, by the way, is activated by growth hormone. Mm -hmm. So you're affecting downstream targets of growth hormone in a different way. Never in the history of sports has anyone been able to use erythropoietin properly. They've only been able to use it to the max amount of hematopoiesis. This is right. the first time they can do that, and nobody knows about it yet. So mm -hmm. I thought it would be cool to talk about on your sure. on your. Yeah. So it's sort of a Duchenne moment where there's a new drug. So you think so you think the SIBO peptides are going to be like the new thing that people are going to start banging in, or well, probably more. We'll see it in the I would think in the endurance athletes, right? No, they. I mean, these all don't cause hematopoiesis. They will all cause massive, massive regeneration, massive healing, more than potentially more than growth hormone. Something like TB five hundred mixed with growth hormone, a lot of angiogenesis, probably localized effects. Also, mm -hmm. it could be a completely new tool, like at least more useful than TB five hundred and BPC one five seven, which are common peptides used these days. Used for healing purposes, but what about muscle recovery? Muscle, not just muscle recovery, but the jack stat, uh, the jack stat pathway builds hyperplasia across the body. Also, that well, that that's that's different di than what TB five hundred and um, um, BPC. They do angiogenesis. This does that too. So yeah. this does angiogenesis, hyperplasia, because it goes through the jack stat pathway. For yeah. example, like for cancers, they have jack inhibitors. So this is a thing that's going to grow, and it's a totally different. Now, the reason why I'm not getting into the details of the science is because we don't know what it would do. Right. Nobody's ever used it. It's totally experimental. Somebody could take it and, well, if they have genetics for it or they have a lot of growth already in their body, they may have mutated uh, cells and they may end up with a cancer. And don't blame me if you do that. Right. Right. But well, yeah. And, and the reason it's important to mention this is because look what Boston Lloyd did with his kidneys with the uh, with that with that peptide. Well, that, that peptide is an a pro apoptosis peptide. That's that's a different level. That's something that kills cells. <laughs> that's all it does. So if you inject that, it kills cells. It gets in your blood. I told him the day that he told me about it. I yeah. mean, he knew. Oh, you actually warned them about the fact that it could kill his kidney cells? Not kidney. I said that will kill any cell in your body. Right. So why would anyone in their right mind take that? Why would they even experiment with that with that drug, with that peptide? People are obsessed with losing fat. Not everyone has such little fat as you, Dave. Yeah, I know, but... but I, I Look at me. I just ate for a little bit. My cheeks grew. I mean, some people are obsessed with fat, so <laughs> they do weird things. I mean, they take DNP with thyroid medication, with clenbuterol, right. and, right. and the, the fat loss medications are the most harmful to the health. Right. In general, because you turn on your sympathetic nervous drive, you, you speed up the metabolism. When you speed up the metabolism, everything damages faster. All the oxidative stress happens faster. Sure. In fact, Dave, did you know there used to be a theory for the way caloric restriction extends life in humans? And the theory was simply that it's not that they eat less. It's not that it's a growth pathway. It's simply that their body temperature is lower mm. and that, th that the metab their metabolism is slower. So they live longer. It's like turtles. So Tortoises. Tortoises live 150 years because their metabolism is the, so slow. That was the theory, exactly. Yeah. So, so the idea basically is that these erythropoietin molecules, you know, people manufacture them, manufacture molecules in China for $30,000. I assume if any of these companies knew about this stuff, they would be immediately manufacturing well, now it. Well, they, now they will know about it, so they're they going to be yeah. doing this. And I would like some credit if someone could just say, Leo told us. Well, you don't want credit if someone, if it turns out that they actually cause no, cancer. No, but I said this will cause cancers. This will cause cancers if, you're, if, if, you're, if, if you have potential to cancer. Don't take growth hormones. Well, don't I, eat protein. Don't eat leucine. Don't, don't eat a ton of leucine. Right. Don't 400 grams of protein a day because you'll grow your cancers too right 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 all of the bodybuilding thing is about growth so if you're prone to cancers you're already you're already risking right. everything i tell people if you have existing cancers in your body you don't want anything that kind of potentiates like any kind of growth hormone effect anabolic steroids don't seem to have that 
that effect on, on cancer cells, but the grow, growth peptides do, you know, the growth inducing peptides. Of, of course, I mean, they must have like, so the way I think of it is this, uh, for, first of all, obviously the, you know, the growth inducing uh, peptides must have more, more of a potential for that, but you know that androgens increase mTOR. So yes. androgens cause hyperplasia also. So that's for sure. It's just at a le lesser, lesser of a degree, maybe like eating protein or something like that. My thought, by the way, Dave, the way I think of it is this. If we take growth hormone, like I took growth hormone, maybe not as long as you, but I took growth hormone a little bit. My shoe size increased by two. It mm. went from uh, 11 to 13. So mm. I did some damage to my body. Yeah. That means that my cells divided way faster than they should have, which mm. basically means the cells can only divide a certain number of times. I mean, this is get 40 something times and then they either become synolytic or they become apoptotic and right. they die. Right. If they're synolytic, it's e uh, either or they get DNA damage when they're replicating also. So there's where the cancers right. come from. Right, right, right. To me, growth hormone is just it's like it's like it's like you have it's like in California, the 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 outside is dry and you just put a match on and everything can burn. <laughs> right. You have all this DNA damage, anything goes wrong. Right. That's you know why I, mean? I think if you're eating right, you're sleeping right, you're taking the right supplements, you, you tend not to be prone to, you know, to any problems. Probably that's why when I was, you know, younger and I had no, no stress in my life, you know, I, I had no problems with that. You know, interestingly, someone asked me, and I don't want to forget this question I got to ask you. Someone said they wanted to see, because you, you have told people and mentioned before that you had weighed, I think, 230 pounds at one point. Yeah, 40, 240. Yeah, I, I, people want uh, evidence. Do you have any pictures we can put up? Yeah, I have on my Instagram. I have pictures, not at 240, I have 220. Yeah, yeah. People want to see pictures. I, I, no, that's one of the things. Instagram, everyone can see. Okay. And 18 other... and a half inch arms, you can see. Yeah, okay. You, you, got, you send me the pictures, we'll put them up. 335 pounds now, which is not something you want to do to your body when, you're, uh, when you have heart issues and congenitive, congestive heart failure. I mean, obviously, yeah, you can take one look at his legs and, and they, you know, they look like a typical textbook you know, congestive heart failure patient. You know, he was saying that he used to have 35% ejection fraction. And, mm -hmm. and, and judging by the videos that he was uh, uh, filming before three years ago and how his videos are now, yeah. I assume, I don't know anything about ejection fraction, but I assume it must be half yeah. or less. Well, so I, I mean, assume he's we, basically an acute heart failure at yeah. the moment. Look, you have, you've, you've tried to help him. I've tried to help him. Other people have tried to help him. Lenny does what Lenny wants to do, obviously. I was just asking him the other day when he was on After Hours about this, and he was... He wants to be huge. I don't know. I, what, what do I, you know, look, you know, everyone has different goals in life. Some people don't care about living. They want to just be a certain way and they'll live that life that certain way. And then, you know, and then it's over, you know. Um, I choose to want to live a long time. But you, I know I, you I feel the same fear. way. So I believe it's fear. I believe it's fear. The fear of facing reality and, and trying to struggle. The fear of failure. The fear of facing, trying to be healthy and, and failing. Mm -hmm. You know, like the fear to succeed. Yeah. I feel that that's what's inside of psychology, but I can't get to it. I tried my hardest. Last week, as I told you, I sent a very, I mean, I researched heart failure, honestly, guys, for like three, four hours yeah. just by myself at home. Sent him Instagram messages. I was mm -hmm. writing, typing for hours, you know, so long. And he just said, okay. I mean, at the end, he's, I know he doesn't follow any of it, yeah. but I tried my best at, at this yeah. point. I, I try to help him with his the detoxification of his body and get that, that abdomen down with that visceral fat. And he didn't want to listen. Yeah. Look, I explained to people the other day, you know, I had um, enlarged left ventricle function or size um, and hypertrophy in my heart for years, you know, after bodybuilding. And, you know, I saw a doctor, most doctors said, oh, it's not going to go away. And, and I knew it was basically athletically driven from lifting heavy weights. And the last five years, since I basically haven't been lifting heavy weights and I really haven't, um, you know, I haven't taken any anabolics or growth hormone, my heart got smaller, you know, my, my left ventricle is only mildly, you know, enlarged now. So the heart is a muscle and you can detrain it. And just like if Lenny wanted to get his heart back in to normal size and he lost, you know, a hundred pounds, which he'd still be big Lenny at a hundred pounds less, he'd probably have a, a you know, a much less likelihood of having a heart attack and dying. But, you know, obviously mentally he can't handle that. Well, you're on a beta blocker, which is no, shown to exaggerate. I'm not on a beta blocker now. You're not anymore? No. No, no, I, I was only on one for about two months. I, it, didn't, no it, didn't, it didn't do Why? anything to my blood pressure, and it didn't really no. affect my heart rate at all. So I didn't... Massively I, increases the speed of left ventricular uh, re... whatever they call it. That's, that that's why they originally put it on, but I didn't, I didn't you know, it, it didn't necessarily... That's why me, I'm on it. That's one of the reasons I'm on it. I I'm have telling a you, you know what happened? I started trying to have babies, you know, and, and that you get retrograde ejaculation from that, so it can infect how you get your wife pregnant. So I went off of it. And I was off of it so long because we had three kids that the, my cardiologist said, you don't even need it. Your heart has gotten smaller. 
you know, your, your blood pressure is fine. And so he said, that, you know, that's funny. Yeah. You mentioned that I've never heard of that side effect. That oh I've been yeah, taking it does. Numbers. Definitely. Yeah. Go look, when you look for preg, you know, Wait, problems. Did with, you notice um, it or is it something you wouldn't notice? It feels different a little down there, but they've shown that it, it can definitely in, influence uh, the ability to get a, a woman pregnant. Yeah. You know, something we don't talk about often enough, I think maybe the viewers don't know, is that your semen actually has antioxidants in it. And the more antioxidants you're consuming when you're trying to conceive, in addition to your fertility protocol, right. like using ubiquinol and using, sure. uh, or using uh, vitamin C and NAC and these things, will actually affect... Uh, the health of the sperm in the end. And actually, when you go to fertility clinics, they actually give you antioxidants, like prescription yeah, well, ones. Yeah, well, morphology of the sperm, too, is important. Vitamins, minerals, you know, uh, you know trace metals. You, you, your sperm are basically just a, a microcosm of your whole body, right? I mean, so if, you're, if your body is toxic, you know, your sperm are not going to be, you know, the healthiest thing swimming around. And if you're a bodybuilder and have low sperm count to begin with, it's like you got two whammies against you. So you can boost up sperm count and motility, but if the morphology is not good, you won't get a woman pregnant either, you know. Dave, can you answer me a question? Because you're the expert on this. So now there's a huge debate going on in the bodybuilding world about Greg Doucette, which yeah. I sort of, uh, honestly, I sort of started, not the debate, but the question about whether he's really on TRT. So Greg Doucette, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the end of last year, uh, around December, yeah. uh, finished this uh, uh, competition and then said he went on 140 milligrams of testosterone with no aromatase inhibitor, right. no growth hormone, and absolutely no other compound from then until now. Right. Yet somehow, He's very muscular on on, on TV, and yeah. he has very thin skin. Yeah. Looks like he's an aromatase inhibitor. And looks like he's using two units of GH, right. but he's not. Yeah. So I've been pointing this out, and I think he's lying to sell cookbooks. Yeah. And so I've been saying that, right? And now people started to believe me for some reason. And so Greg mentioned that now he's going off HRT. So it's another level. He yeah. was already on HRT, but now he's going off. So we don't know if he's going from 1,000 right. to 500 or right. what. We don't know what's going on exactly. So today he made a video trying to clarify and respond to my accusations about the AI and the GH and yeah. all that stuff. And he said in the video that his sperm motility was excellent, not just his sperm count while he was on the 140 milligrams, which does not make any no, sense unless no. you're on an AI. If you're on an AI, and even then it wouldn't make sense, by no. the way, it'd still be a lie, but, yeah. but the only way it would happen is if you're on an AI because he himself says 140 is over the natural dose. So yeah. your mind would recognize the negative feedback signal, reduce Absolutely. the testosterone synthesis, unless you're on an AI, maybe it'll reduce it a little bit less. So at least he's on an AI, he's lying somehow. Well, you know, the funny thing is that a, a low dose of testosterone is actually, I find, worse than a high dose. High dose of testosterone, you actually, your concentration in the bloodstream actually is higher. So when it goes through the testicles, you might actually you get some that? stimulation down there. Whereas you have a low, when you have a low dose of testosterone, you've diluted down your, your testosterone so much that the blood supply that goes through the testicles, there's almost no testosterone there. The reason why you, you produce sperm in your testicles is because you're, you're cranking testosterone right there. So it's bathing those Sertoli cells. Um, I, how would he even know what his motility was? Did he get his sperm checked? He claimed he did, but by the way, every time he does a blood test, he literally screenshots a tiny line. It never has his name on it, and he never shows more. Well, I mean, it's, you, you got to get a sperm. You got to give a sperm sample to get a motility test. You can't take a yeah, blood test and do that. He didn't so. show. I mean, but even if he showed that test, he would just show like a right. tiny. I mean, he's you know a very. You know what the truth is? I don't see why Greg Doucette would actually even lie about this stuff. I, there's no reason for him to lie at this point because he's pretty transparent anyway. Um, I think he likes to say controversial things because obviously it, it gets attract attracts people to his channel and causes people like you and other people to kind of say things about him and then that gives him more material to respond to. So, um, you know, who knows? I you know very I don't know many people who just arbitrarily go and get their sperm analyzed. You know what I mean? Unless he's trying to have a baby or something like that with his wife. I don't know, but. As far as I know, being on HRT is probably the worst way to get someone pregnant, you know, because it does reduce, usually you have very low sperm numbers on that. And if you have low sperm, you're going to have low motility, obviously. Um, the best thing actually to increase motility, believe it or not, is injectable glutathione. Glutathione has been yeah, shown yeah, to yeah. really boost motility of sperm, you know, tremendously. Antioxidant, yeah. That's how I, mean, I got my wife pregnant the third time. I didn't take any HCG or HMG. I was just on injectable glutathione and she got pregnant. You know, Were so. you injecting IV or IM? No, I am intramuscular. I get it from Titan Medical. I do 200 milligrams a day, and that's all I was taking. And I had to use massive amounts of HMG, HCG, the you know the first two babies to get her pregnant, and then this one was nothing. So, who knows? You know the motel. You know, I think a lot of guys their sperm count is good. I think their motility sucks. So, 
once again, it, you know, if you're if you are you know looking to get someone pregnant and you and you can't figure out what's wrong, try injectable glutathione because that seemed to be the magic that worked for me. So, uh, you know, for me, after three years on cycle without a break, I went off, uh, did a tr, I mean, a, a post cycle for yeah. a year long with the, with FSH and right. with HPG and with and with enclomiphene, with well, clomid actually, but yeah. it should be a bit of enclomiphene and an EI. And I I've never tested my testosterone function just because I'm not very interested in it, but I've tested my sperm tons of times. Yeah. And uh, my pregnancy was totally natural. First try as well. Yeah, totally well, that, natural. I mean, you had the, you did the perfect again. protocol. That's my protocol, essentially, you would do it. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Based off your protocol, I yeah. just changed the HMG to FSH because it's newer. It's the same thing. And it's the same thing. The same yeah, thing, yeah. It's yeah. just more... And then I, uh, exactly, and I but I combined Clomid and NAI at the same time. Right, and it's a lot of times, it, if some moderate. people aromatize more than others, I don't really aromatize much in my body, so that would have been too much, I think, for me. It would have killed my sex drive, so, but I, you're right. Some people do our big aromatizers, so the, yeah. the, the FSH with the LH, which is basically HCG, can definitely cause a spike in, in, in estrogen in those people, so some people can probably benefit from a small AI. You, you, you know, I got... Again, oh, yeah. final statement, uh, Leo. Go, uh, I was just going to ask, do you believe in the LH receptor downregulation in the gonads from uh, HCG, long-term HCG use? It's a big topic now. I, I, you know, I don't think so because I, I didn't notice it in myself. Every time I take I, I, I stay on, I'm on no HRT or no GH, but I'll take a shot of HCG once a week or maybe every 10 days just for good measure because uh, it keeps my sex drive, you know, it keeps, I just feel good. It gives me a better good feeling and I never seem to not respond to it. So, and I've been on it for five years. So, um, I, I, I was don't believe doing that. I just got some in the mail. It's the first time I'm thinking of using HCG since I went clean two years ago. Yeah. If you're clean, it, you'll see, you'll notice a difference. If you're not clean and you're on HRT and you take a, a shot of, a, F, uh, of HCG, you probably won't even notice a difference. No, I've been clean. Like my voice is like a woman's voice. I've been clean for two years. <laughs> yeah. Like really clean. Believe me, like, you're I not reversing your, 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 uh, your vocal cords at all. <laughs> at least you I know? have the beard so they don't confuse Look, me. Thank you, thank you so much, Dave, for having the, me. Yeah. Uh, your sure. show is the uh, Leo Longevity Show on YouTube, guys. Uh, check it out if you want some cutting edge information. Information. Leo's always reading the latest papers and putting out the great information and keep doing what you're doing. And look, like I said, I'm about, I got to, I got to air everything. So I don't want to catch you off guard with the questions I asked you. I know that, that was a sensitive topic, but the reason I brought it up is because I know you're willing to talk about pretty much anything. And you know what? That's what makes people like you because you know, you're about the truth and you like to put your truth out there and people respect that. Well, I have one last thing to say to you. You're going to have a lot of maniacs upset with you today. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't, you know, I don't care. The good opinion of others doesn't really matter to me. I'm about the truth and putting it out there. No, and, not about me. Yeah. I'm talking about, I'm talking about what happened yesterday. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think they're mad at me. I know they're mad at Mr. G because he went crazy. Oh, yeah, Lenny. they're I, really mad at Mr. G. I don't have any problem. Look, Lenny can say whatever he wants in the show. Mr. G might, well, now they want to get in the ring with each other. Mr. G's going to start fighting MMA, so he's starting to train. So I think Actually, we're going to get, we're going to arrange the super oh. fight of the century big lenny versus mr g in the octagon you know i just want i just want to say something to mr g uh i didn't really know who he was yeah. i've never watched that show properly mm -hmm. because i didn't really know who he was and i just wanted mr g to know that we don't think bad of him at the show lenny yeah. is just talks like that about everyone yeah so he talks bad about me too he talks about everyone he that's just how he is it wasn't and it really wasn't and we don't think that way in our show we never that. talk bad about your show Thank at you. all we're completely we love your show yeah no we and we feel Just the same you about know, you. it's not from us yeah okay all right yeah. thank you good Dave. enough thank you leo uh guys i hope you enjoyed this episode of guru talk if you have more questions or topic suggestions put them in the comments below i'm dave palumbo with leo rex we'll see you next time